How do I wire a home line 70A2 spaces 4 circuits, HUM 24L70 SCP, load center using a 30 a 2 peak thick, HUM 230 thick, square D home line circuit breaker. How old is the system in question? And have you consulted an electrician yet? All new system. Do you plan on doing the work yourself? Yes. Anything else we should know to help you best? Actually, I'm using a 10 AWG wire that's already connected to the main center and intend to connect to an on-demand water heather, Stiebel Ultron DHC82 using a disconnect box. Hello my name is I will be happy to answer your home improvement or electrical question also note that the website may be sending you a telephone offer, the offer is not originating from me. 1. How many amps is the sub-panel feeder circuit breaker that will be located in the main electrical panel? 30 amps or other? 2. What is the approx distance from the main panel to the sub-panel? 3. Will the sub-panel be installed at a detached building from the main panel? 1, 30A2, 30-43, no. Same building. As I stated the wiring from the main to sub-panels is already there. It used to feed a dryer. 1, okay, the sub-panel feeder circuit needs to be a four-wire circuit comprised of two hots one neutral and one equipment grounding conductor. All four wires need to be 10 AWG copper. 1. So what is your question? 1. The 30 amp feeder breaker does not need to be a GFCI breaker. It can be a standard 30 amp double pole breaker, non-GFCI. How do I wire a home line 70A2 spaces 4 circuits, HUM 24L70 SCP, load center using a 30 a 2 peak thick, HUM 230 thick, square D home line circuit breaker. Trying to send you a photo of the sub panel. The 30 AMP feeder breaker in the main panel isn't a GFCI but the one in the sub panel is. Its purpose is to feed an on-demand water heather which will be placed right under a sink. Because of the nature of the cop monad to be fed, water heather, I was told to use a sub-panel with a GFCI breaker. 1. You don't need a GFCI breaker, install a full-size 30-amp double-pole breaker in the main panel and extend 410 AWG copper wires to the sub-panel location. Two wires will be the hots, one wire will be the neutral and the fourth wire will be the ground. 2. Tape the two hots at both ends using black and red electrical tape to identify the hots. The neutral needs to be white insulated. The ground needs to be green insulated or bare copper. 3. At the sub-panel, you will need a separate equipment ground bar to land only ground wires. 4. At the sub-panel, do not install the green main bonding screw or a main bonding jumper strap to the neutral bus bar. 5. Electric hot water heaters do not require GFCI protection. Sub-panels also do not require a GFCI as the feeder breaker. 1. GFCI is only required for receptacles located within 6 feet of a sink. An electric hot water heater is always hardwired and never cord and plug connected to a receptacle. Therefore, GFCI is not required. 1. An electric hot water heater is a fixed appliance and is not considered as portable. Thus the reason they are always hardwired. 2. You also need a 240 volt disco switch readily accessible or a locking device installed on the double pole heater breaker. Okay. Thanks. Please allow me to send the heather and wire pictures. Okay. Actually, is there a way to post photos on this page? 
1. On your end, there should be a paperclip icon to attach pics. Here are the pictures. On the third photo, sub-panel to water heather, please note that the distance from the wire, top left on the photo, and the on-demand water heather slash sink is about 5. Rick the pick apostrophe s dot so what is your question? Since, the on-demand water heather is located just below the sink, doesn't that require a GFCI? Both the ground and neutral wire coming from the main panel are going on the same lug on the sub-panel. 1. GFCI is not required for the water heater. 2. The sub-panel requires a separate equipment ground bar to only land ground wires. Only neutral wires terminate to the neutral bus bar on any sub-panel. Does that help to answer your question? Okay. So the confusion is that there's a missing ground bar in the sub-panel. Any idea why would the sub-panel come without it? 1. Most sub-panels are not furnished with an equipment ground bar. You will need to purchase a separate ground bar. Very common on small panels to not have a ground bar furnished. If you have any additional questions, just let me know and I'll be glad to answer them for you. Otherwise, don't forget to rate me before you log off. Thanks. Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. I'll get the extra ground bar. I understand that I don't need a GFCI breaker now but since the expensive breaker was purchased a year ago and isn't refundable, I have little choice but to use it. In any case, for future reference, what is the disco switch and how would that work with my setting? No problem, glad to assist. 1. Yes, most panels are not furnished with a ground bar and you will need to purchase a small bar, maybe $5 or $6 at most sold at Home Depot. 2. You can certainly use a GFCI breaker, as that is not a code violation. It is just not required by code is all. 3. For an electric hot water heater, code requires one of the following to disconnect the circuit. A. The circuit breaker must be inside of the heater or B. A 240 volt double pole disconnect switch needs to be installed and readily accessible. Or C. A lockable device that will lock onto the heater double pole circuit breaker. This is the most cost-effective and easiest method to comply with the code if the circuit breaker is not within line of sight. Great! Thanks for your help, Kevin. I'll leave a feedback. No problem, glad to assist. Thank you for the positive service rating. Much appreciated. If you have any other questions, just let me know. Take care, and have a great day and also a Merry Christmas. Thanks again. Kevin Hi Kevin, one last question. Can I run a Romex 10 to 3 nautical miles cable uncovered in a small portion of a bathroom? Or does it need to be in a conduit or can it be in a conduit? 1. NM Romex cables always need to be protected where subject to any possible physical damage in unfinished surfaces. Most common method is to install it inside EMT conduit or use individual wires inside a conduit rather than installing Romex cables. Okay. I read somewhere that the Romex may be at risk of producing too much heat inside a conduit. Is that so? Can the Romex be installed inside a liquid flex type of conduit? 1. NM Romex is allowed to be installed in any type of raceway. 2. It is much easier to pull individual wires in a conduit rather than pulling a cable. Excellent. Thanks again Kevin. No problem, glad to assist. 
Take care, and have a great evening. Thanks again. Kevin Would separating wires from that Romex cable, getting rid of sheeting, and running them as individual wires inside a liquid tight flex pipe be fine then? Running lengths only going to be two outside walls, then going three under sink slash inside bathroom closet. 1. Removing the individual wires from a cable sheath will violate the UL listing of the cable. Not sure if you are planning on running NM Romex on the exterior of the home? If so, Romex cable is not rated for damp and or wet conditions. 2. If using liquid tight flex, just install separate insulated type THHN slash THWN wires as these are rated for damp, wet and or dry conditions. I wanted to use the wires inside the Romex, as this is what I have on hands and as you mentioned that pulling individual wires inside a conduit is easier than the Romex cable. I would run the liquid tight flex pipe indoor. Is it unsafe and if so why? 1. The intent of NM Romex cable is to install it as an open air cable, even though it is allowed to be installed inside a raceway with the exterior cable sheath in place. If removing the exterior cable sheath, this will void the UL listing of the cable. The cable was certified and tested by Underwriters Lab as a cable assembly with all wires intact with the cable sheath and was not tested using individual conductors. In fact, if you ever remove the cable sheath from an NM Romex cable, you will notice that the individual wires are not labeled. Using unlabeled individual conductors inside a raceway is a violation of the National Electrical Code. The most common application to install NM Romex inside a conduit is for the wall areas on an unfinished basement or an unfinished garage. Other than these two applications, there should not be a need to install Romex inside a conduit as the interior of the home should be finished with drywall, thus conduit protection is not required. 2. Whenever installing LFMC, individual wires are always installed using insulated type THHN slash THWN. This is the standard method within the electrical industry to install the correct wire type within any flexible raceway. 3. LFMC is only used for wet and or damp conditions. It is code compliant to run LFMC inside, but it is not a cost-effective method. Armored cable or flexible metal conduit, Greenfield, is more cost-effective for indoor applications. Yes, you can install LFMC on the interior if you want. 1. If installing individual conductors within a raceway, here is the type to use. Most wires sold today are dual insulated rated as types THHN slash THWN. See this link https colon slash www.hamadepot.com slash p slash southwire 50 foot 10 black stranded cuthn wire 22,973,283,204,812,488 If you have a home improvement or appliance question and want to chat with an expert now visit justanswer.com slash yti